What's up you guys, it's D-Machine again, and I'm bringing you a second episode of Know Your Enemies. Now, I said this before in the first episode, but if this is your first time tuning in, the reason why I'm making this series is to educate you PvPers out there on all the classes of World of Warcraft. The more you know about the other classes, the better off you are. Understanding when, when cooldowns are being popped, or when a special ability is being used, and what to do at certain times is very important. Almost just as important as knowing your own class. Um, but first of all, I'd like to thank uh, our wow the subreddit on Reddit. They uh, they helped me a lot. They supported me. They supported this whole idea, and they also gave me some really sound advice. So shout out to uh, the subreddit our wow. If you guys don't know, uh, check it out. If you play World of Warcraft, they have everything. They have just about anything you can think of on that subreddit for World of Warcraft. It's reddit.com/r/wow. Check them out. And uh, but this time around, I'm going to be talking to you guys about mages. So, mages. There's three different specs, right? Uh, but we're talking about PvP, specifically Arena, because that's the most competitive part about th this PvP in this game, right? Uh, so there's Fire, Arcane, and Frost. Uh, fire is pretty cool. It relies mainly on critting and getting heat the heating up buff, and then uh, using instant pyroblasts. Honestly, you give up so many tools uh, that you would normally have on your Frost Mage, uh, that it's not necessarily the most viable, but there's certain really good mages like Hansel, for example, that do make it viable, but to be completely honest with you guys, Hansel's entire comp is based around Hansel. It is so much pressure to put on that one, on that one player, but, uh, if you really want to make it work, it is possible. Arcane, kind of the same story, I'd say it's even less viable than Fire. Um, you have to create these stacks, um, so you have to cast a lot. When you get these arcane stacks, you need to cast a lot of arcane abilities. And after you get these stacks, you're able to unleash it all, and it does a ridiculous amount of single target damage, but setting up those stacks, there's just so much time that goes by that the other team can use to set up a kill on your team. Um, and when you're tunneling an arcane mage down, they're just about rendered useless unless in the hands of a really good mage like Mitch Jones or maybe ABN, sorta. <laughs> and then finally there is Frost. Frost just has so many abilities. They have so many snares, they have so many procs, they have so much damage, and it's just so obvious how much more dominant this spec is over the other two. And I would recommend it to anyone. Um, if you really enjoy Fire or Arcane, I don't say give up on it, but I would say use Frost to understand the game better, and then switch to that later on. That is my recommendation to you, but uh, Frost right now is definitely the most viable. So, first things first, defensive cooldowns of a mage. Uh, I mean, there's the very obvious ice block. Now, ice block can be removed either by shattering throw or um, mass dispel, which uh, you can definitely kill a mage because when a mage uses ice block, he gets a debuff called hypothermia that doesn't let him use an ice block for a certain period of time afterwards. Now, ice block, the ability, the cooldown can actually be reset by an ability called cold snap. Cold Snap in itself is a defensive cooldown. It actually gives him health back. It gives him, uh, I'm not even sure, 30% of his health back, I believe. Um, so in itself, it is a cooldown. Uh, you can see someone go Ice Block and then come out, and then uh, use Cold Snap later on and get 30% of their health back, which is actually fantastic. Um, something else to take into consideration after an Ice Block, guys, is that there is a Glyph. If a mage is running the Ice Block Glyph, he's going to be immune to after the block goes down for a few seconds so if you're like if the mage just blinked and then ice blocked and you're like oh i'm gonna hodge him out of this if he doesn't sit the full thing or something like that don't because he may or may not have that immunity glyph all right now i want to talk about real quick about the level 30 talent tier um, there's a few things that are pretty viable um but majority of the time mages are going to be running uh temporal shield what it does is it heals them back for 100% of the damage that they take for a really short window, like 4 seconds. So if they are shockwaved and they know they're about to take a lot of damage because they just blinked in, they'll temporal shield and they'll heal themselves back up. But this, uh, this spell is only 4 seconds, but it can also be dispelled. So if they're temporal shield and you take that off, they are probably relying on that and you'll probably get some pretty substantial pressure out of that. But uh, just to take into consideration this temporal shield, um, can be used when they're CC'd. Um, inside that same uh, tier, that talent tier, is Ice Barrier. You won't see it too much, you'll see it mainly against uh, mages that are dueling or maybe even mages that are 2v2ing arena without a healer um, because it's just not nearly as useful. It's just a baseline absorb, really. Um, 
but uh, I don't really see it that often in high tier, high tier um, mages. So uh, something that's very similar that's actually on the level 90 tier of talents is Encanter's Ward. Um, it's very simpler, simple, or similar <laughs> to Temporal Shield. Uh, it's a it's an absorb though. So for example, the damage that happens to the mage is absorbed, but then also healed. Um, so that's nice, right? Uh, I also see this when this uh, ability is down, it increases their damage and increases baseline damage. It's actually a really good talent, not just for the absorb, but a lot of mages do run it when they know that they're going to be uh, when they're going to be tunneled. So Ring of Frost. Now, Ring of Frost can be used in multiple ways. It can be used as a CC. It can be used as a defensive ability, and it can also be used as an offensive ability. Um, it's an AOE area effect that freezes people when they walk through it. I'm sure everyone has seen it a million times. But placing this around like a teammate that's in trouble with two melee tunneling them can be the difference between them dying or living. Um, not only that, but I also see players use it offensively. Players use it to bring a frost to target. Like for example, I see Jamili do this in a stream all the, all the time. I feel like it's almost his go-to is that he deeps a target if he has a fingers of frost proc. I'll talk about that later, and then he'll ring. He'll probably get interrupted on the ring and then polymorph because polymorph is in a different tree. It can be used for a lot of different ways, but defensively, it's definitely viable to peel a target off of a teammate. Last, but definitely not least of the defensive abilities is Alter Time. Now, Alter Time, just like Ring of Frost, can be used in a whole bunch of different ways. It can be used defensively and offensively. Um, so Alter Time, for example, when you use Alter Time, all damage that's being done to that mage at that time is basically useless, unless it is dispelled. Alter Time is a dispellable ability, there's a short window to grab it, but um, majority of the time, mages will be fairly reckless uh, if they're using this uh, defensively, because they know that they're about to get all that health back, right? So if you're able to get that Alter Time off, that could mean uh, getting a big defensive cooldown or even a kill because uh, they think they're okay and they're not noticing the Alter Time drop down. So, uh, but majority of the time, to be completely honest with you guys, Alter Time is used offensively uh, nowadays and I'll go into that a bit later. So this is something I really want to stress guys, something that I feel like is kind of overlooked. Mage armors are a thing. You need to pay attention to them. If you're trying to determine what target to kill, um, and mage is a definitely a viable one, pay attention to what armor they're in. If they're in, for example, molten armor, this is the most defensive mage armor that there is out of the three. It decreases damage that is done to them by 6% all the time, baseline. It's actually really good. It also increases their spell crit by 5%. Frost armor, a really greedy mage will use frost mar armor if they don't think that they're going to be looked at. Um, it increases their spell haste by 7% and slows target on them by 30 when it hit. Um, so that losing that decreased damage is a big deal, even though 6% doesn't sound like a lot in a span of a long game against like a KFC, it could be the difference to why they died. Uh, mage armor is increases their mastery by 3k and reduces the duration of harmful magic effects by 25%. Um, I mean, you'll see that against like LSDs and stuff like that, but honestly, um, molten armor is usually the go to uh, art mage armor for a majority of uh, smart mages. I mean, there's some hand mages out there like Mitch Jones or even Jamili that will, will be a bit greedier when they know that they, their comp lets them not uh, be tunneled into the ground. They have lots of peels. So just be aware of what armor mages are using and use that information to determine what target you want to kill. So offensive abilities, the very first ability that I want to talk about that I think is kind of misunderstood is the Frozen Orb. The Frozen Orb does do AoE damage around everyone, but more importantly, it also generates a crap ton of Finger of Frost procs when done on a lot of targets. Finger of Frost is really good. Um, it's something that you get by uh, choosing to be a Frost Mage. It increases Ice Lance's damage by 25%, but also causes your next Deep Freeze or Ice Lance to act as if the target is frozen. Now, something you need to understand when Ice Lance thinks that a target is frozen is that there is a passive ability called Shatter that Mages has. This increases the crit chance by 50%. Um, Mages already have a baseline of like a lot of crits. I'm not really sure what the specifics are, but 50%. I have rarely seen a finger of frost proc not crit on my mage personally. He's not very geared. Um, when you're critting a target, you're generally doing 160 to 200% more damage. 
This is why I was talking about um, the Hunter's Pet Sack before. So if you Pet Sack someone and they're not getting crit, they're losing out on 200 to 160% less damage. That's a lot less damage. So when you see orbs and finger of frox procs going off and a hunter pet sacks that target, um, they usually switch targets because it's not even worth going on them anymore. Not to mention it's a 200% and 160% extra crit damage from the shatter passive on top of the 25% that the fingers of frost baseline gives you. It's an absurd amount of damage and you just need to be aware that the orb is also generating these finger of pro finger of frost procs tongue twister so also please be reminded that this uh this frost orb is only a one minute cooldown so it's gonna come and you should have defensive cooldowns at least ready and if you don't start pillar humping because you will die if done correctly on each one minute cooldown um so now i'm going to talk to you guys about icicles um a good frost mage will keep track of their icicles and um generate them and save them for a big burst so what an icicle is is that every single time a frost fireball or a frost bolt is casted um it saves 30 percent 36 percent of that damage that that frost firebolt just did and puts it in an icicle above their head now an icicle is released every single time they ice lance so there and when you put living bomb on a target they get frost firebolt procs so without even casting they can generate these icicle procs they get living bomb on everyone they get these frost firebolts out they use icy veins and they get these frost bolts out they get five icicles now they use frost firebolt or they're not frost firebolt they use frozen orb to get their ice lance procs or finger of frost procs and then at this time they have five icicles so with their procs they're also releasing all five of these icicles these icicles can be seen on top of their head and when they are released they're still going to continue to be released even if like for example you use deterrence when you use deterrence icicles are still hitting through that deterrence so take that into consideration that you're still going to be taking damage after deterring hunters and so deter higher against mages right you know if you deter at a low health they're still going to be doing damage to you mirror images i guess can be argued whether or not it's an offensive or defensive ability honestly i think it's more of a defensive ability the mediocre amount of damage that they, they, these mirror images do um isn't necessarily amazing but it also detargets so for example if i'm a melee and i'm chasing this mage they use mirror images i detarget the mage so it can almost be used almost like a faint death if you will um, but what I'd like to point out to some mages that they might not know about this is that mirror images are freaking annoying to melee. They spam frost bolts on and majority of the time, like for example as a rep paladin, it's a, a continuous slow. If I'm out of freedoms because you've spell stolen both of them, um, I have to individually cleanse each slow and they're spamming them on me. I've actually gone oom um, cleansing these frost bolts off of myself presence of mind now in this tier it's a talent tier um it's commonly referred to as palm it basically makes something instant now there's nothing you can really do about it because like it's instant but it is dispellable uh, though if they're using palm they're probably going to use the ability right after it so getting that dispel would be pretty pro um but uh majority of the time this ability is used as a cc generator right so they're about to run at somebody and drop a ring of frost around them or polymorph them so just take that into consideration familiarize yourself with the icon and um get ready to get your uh get your healer out of a cc <sighs> blazing speed is on the same tier as presence of mind so if they have blazing speed it's because they got they chose it over presence of mind now blazing speed it kind of looks like rocket boots uh, you're running with fire coming out of the butt. Um, so, I mean, it, Blazing Speed can be used offensively or defensively, but majority of the time, I see good me good mages using it defensively. Like, they know that they're about to get tunneled by double melee, so they want to have another ability other than Blink to get away from them. Um, or they're Mitch Jones, and they just like to use Blazing Speed to run at the enemy team, and it works for them. So, it can be used in a whole bunch of different scenarios, but just understand that if you see that Rocket Boots coming out of the mage, it's because they don't have Palm, and they're going to be having to hard cast a lot more. The importance of the water elemental I feel is severely overlooked. Um, talking about Fingers of Frost earlier and how much damage it really does, um, this elemental basically generates at least one Fingers of Frost proc every 25 seconds and it can be killed very easily. Now if you kill a water elemental they can cast another one fairly quickly um, but after that there's a one minute cooldown. So if you're training a mage and you know you're going to be able to kick them often. 
um, killing that water elemental is very viable. Um, for example, if they're pulling back and the water Ellie is vulnerable, kill it real quick and kill it real quick again. Just keep doing that. Just look for opportunities to do stuff like that. Mages crowd control. I'm going to talk about crowd control here for a little bit and they have, it would seem like they have a lot of abilities for it, but honestly, it's just because a lot of their crowd control has a short cooldown or no cooldown. Polymorph. It's spammable. Um, it can be used a thousand different ways. It can be used either to set up a kill or it can be used uh, to even spam on your entire team just to peel. Um, oh god, it is the most annoying thing in the world when you're literally going into complete 3 DR poly because you almost killed them. And there's nothing you can do about it because that you're frozen in place or something like that. So polymorph is something that is in the arcane tree. If kicked in polymorph, they can still ice block and they can still use frost damage. Um, next is Counterspell. Counterspell is basically either a kick that can lock someone out of a tree completely or a blanket silence. Uh, I oftentimes see people use Deep Freeze, which is another CC ability they have. Deep Freeze one target, Counterspell the healer so they can't cleanse them off of them. Um, when a target is Deep Frozen, they are stunned for 5 seconds and again, they're frozen. Going back to that Shatter passive, their damage or their um, opportunity to crit on them is increased by 50%. So, 50% basically is 100%. They're critting 50% of the time, 100% of the time. <laughs> they can get really creative. And last but not least is Ring of Frost. It can be used not only defensively, but offensively. Uh, so, coming to the end of the guide, guys, just going to give you a few tips and tricks. Mages have a decurse. So, if you're a shaman and you hex someone on their team and the mage is free, you're probably going to get decurse if the mage is pretty good. Um, stay aware of when a mage uses his orb in his deep freeze. Um, being aware of this can save your life. So for example, if you trinketed the last deep freeze, it is only a 30 second cooldown. So get ready to uh, be aware that your healer is about to get CC'd or counterspelled and you're going to go into another deep freeze and if you don't have an out and you aren't communicating to your team that there, there isn't a way to help you on the next deep freeze because you're taking 100% more crits, um, it could be the end of the game right then and there. So what I like to do is play really passively and defensively and hide behind a pillar until I know that I have pet sack up from my hunter or something from my healer or even my trinket back to know that I have an out for their next deep freeze. Keeping track of these big abilities that mages have or even keeping track of their frost orb for their fingers of frost procs can be the difference of winning a game um, because obviously their stuff comes back a lot faster than yours so you need to keep track of that and use your map to your advantage also pay attention to mage blinks now a lot of mages currently aren't using a uh, trinket to get themselves out of cc they're using double damage trinkets so if they blink in uh, aggressively do not be afraid to stun them uh, keep track of when they blink so you know that they're not going to blink out of your stun, but you could get a defensive cooldown right then and there if a mage is being too aggressive. Um, that's basically all I got for today's guide. If there's anything I missed, guys, or anything at all that you want to comment on, please leave it in the comments below. I hope I helped you out with this guide, and if I did, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. And also, special thanks to Reddit for, uh, helping me, m motivate me, rather, uh, to continue this, uh, series. So thanks, and I will see you next time. Also, comments in the below, which class am I doing next?